This is pure gasoline, and I made it using ordinary grocery bags. To start, I had to buy a 6.3 gallon aluminum pot and 50 feet of copper tubing. Honestly, I might have gone a bit overboard here. Ideally, you'd use a steel container, but that would cost a fortune. So I'm making a cheaper version, though it's way more complicated to assemble. I drilled some holes to insert multiple hex bolts with nuts and secure the lid as tightly as possible to the pot. On the lid, I removed all plastic parts, including the safety valves. Then, I drilled holes to connect it to the pot and added two adapters where the safety valves used to be. The lid has three gasoline outlets, and we're going to weld two shut, leaving just one. Now we take the copper tubing and cut a section. This will carry hydrocarbon vapor, partly gasoline, into the next stage. The plastic bags are basically polyethylene, a massive polymer made of endless chains of hydrocarbons. These molecules, made only of carbon and hydrogen, are the backbone of many everyday products. We're going to take these monstrous plastic macromolecules and break them into smaller pieces. This process is called cracking. The gasoline we want isn't a single substance, but a cocktail of smaller hydrocarbons, with chains ranging from 4 to 12 carbon atoms. Of course, you can't just toss a plastic bag straight into the pot. We need to gently heat it first to remove all the air and turn it into a dense, compact ball. This works because polyethylene is a thermoplastic. That means when you heat it, it softens and melts easily and can be reshaped. We don't have to limit ourselves to grocery bags. There are many types of plastic packaging that can be used. It's important to stick to plastics that are basically hydrocarbons, like polyethylene, polystyrene, and polypropylene. Materials like PET or PVC have gone through oxidation processes and contain oxygen or chlorine in their structure, which compromises the quality of the final gasoline. After filling the pot and sealing it with an epoxy that withstands up to 1,100 degrees Fahrenheit, it's time to make the HY zeolite. This is the most complex part of all. I found a section in an inorganic synthesis book describing how to make Y zeolite, 